For the Lord is good and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Good morning, church. I greet and welcome each one of us to today's fellowship in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today is an auspicious day for NCF Puni, commemorating our 37th Foundation Day. And we are so grateful to God for guiding and leading us thus far. Let us all give thanks to God in honor, honor Him as we celebrate this 
Foundation Day and His faithfulness and blessings. Since our initial days in 1985 up to today, God's love has been manifested and we, and we dearly remember all our Bionis members, chaplains, and supporters throughout the years from around the world. From only 30 to 40 members in the beginning, NCF have expanded up to 500 to 600 members today to worship our living God and has, been, and has become a community where people from many nations gather to worship the Lord irrespective of tribe, race, and culture, we worship as one in Christ. Church, at this time, I would like to request anyone here today worshiping with us for the first time, we would like to extend our welcome with a left leg and a cross connection. So, if, uh, so please stand wherever you are seated as the ushers will bring it to you. We have a good number of our dear brothers and sisters here today joining with us for the first time. Church, let's all welcome them with a round of applause. <laughs> At this time, I would like to give time to our associate Pastor Tindu for Thanksgiving prayer. All glory and honor to God. Blessed 37th Foundation Day of NCF Pune to each and every one of us who are seated here. Um, may this anniversary of our church be a sign for all of us to continue the good work for Christ and to carry out his mission. And to all my fellow church members and especially to the leadership team, you all have been and has been the rock that kept the church together, that kept us together to fellowship in Christ's name. And on top of that, God has been faithful to NCF Pune. As our chairperson of the core team has mentioned out, that we started in 1985 as a student fellowship with just 30 to 40 members. And now we have grown into a nation's fellowship from different cultures, from different races, coming together to worship the Lord. And how beautiful is that? Uh, before I pray, let me uh, read out a scripture for all of us, a reminder for our church as we observe this 37th foundation day of our church. Here it says from Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 9. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 9, it says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Let us not give up doing the good work for Lord and his mission. Let us persevere and continue to shine for him. Shall so we pray? Lord Father, we thank you for the life and the ministry of NCF Pune. With full of gratitude, we give thanks to you and praise you for we are celebrating this 37th foundation of our church. This church started as a small student fellowship, but today it has grown into a nation fellowship. Your faithfulness never fails and you never forget us. Oh Lord God, your promise stands. Father, we are all in one in Christ. We pray that your spirit will continue to knit us together in the bonds of unity and love so that we will live as faithful and dutiful member of your body. Father, you have promised that you are the one that built your church and today we ask of you again to continue to equip us with talents and gifts obedience and willingness to carry out the mission that you have commanded us to do. And also, Lord, continue to give us the joy to serve one another. Father, protect us from the schemes of the devil who seeks to destroy and cause divisions among your body. Help us to be sober-minded, 
self-control, respectable, hospitable, and gentle to, to, towards each other. And Lord, help us to seek to regard the needs and necessities of, of others beyond, before our own. Father, as we celebrate this day, we ask of your special blessing once again to grant your brand new knowledge, discernment, and strength to all the leaders of NCF Pune so that they may lead your people in the way of righteousness. And also, Lord, give your wisdom to those that teach and a teachable heart to those who listen. And Father, we have been praying and asking for a place of our own to worship. And today, we come before you in your due time, in your purpose. May you grant that place for us. May you provide us the land. May you provide us the finances, O oh Lord God. As we shout out to you, because your faithfulness never fails. Your promise always stands. And your grace and your provision always continue on for this NCF church. And we believe that you will provide us what we ask and what we long for. And Lord God, to that end, we give thanks to you and praise you for who you are and for what you have been doing in the ministry and in the church of NCF Pune. We give glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, I would also like to take some few time to uh, pray for one of our members. Today we are going to bid adieu to one of our faithful and active members. Uh, it is said to part ways. It is always to set part ways. But on the other side, our God works everything for those who love him. And it is always part of his plan. And uh, may I call Ms. Atoholi Su to come forward. Yes, uh, Ato is a good friend of mine, a classmate during our BD days. She came in the year 2014, and from that onwards, she served the church and served Pune faithfully, dutifully. She joined in the finance tax group, and she has been contributing so much from that onwards. She completed her MTH, Master in Theology, in 2020 from Union Biblical Seminary and joined the same college as a faculty member teaching in the New Testament department. And in 2021, she joined the pastoral team. And from that onwards, she served and she teach and she gave the pastoral care to all of us. And we are so grateful for her we are so thankful for her, uh, for all that she has contributed for NCF Pune. God has opened the way for our dear friend, Otto, to continue her further studies. And soon she will be joining the University of Hamburg in Germany to pursue her doctorate in theology. Um, we are so blessed and so happy to see and to know that she will be going for her further studies and we congratulate her and also give our best wishes to her. And we have a small token of love from our church. We don't have anything but just a small token of love for all the things that she have contributed to our church and CF Pune. May I hand over this on behalf of the church. Let me read out a scripture verse for her, um, a blessing and a word uh, for her uh, as she moved out from NCF Pune from Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, it says, whatever you do, 
whether in word or deed. Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God the Father through him. And to Otto, this is our prayer as a church and as a family of NCF Pune. We would like to say farewell and goodbye to you. And with this scripture verse, um, that whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Live and work in the name of Jesus Christ, so that you being on, so that your, so that you will bring honor to Christ in every aspect and your daily activity of your life. Today, in Sir Pune family, send you with blessings to shine and be the light to the world and wherever you go. Um, we would like to say a prayer for her, and I invite the pastoral team member to come forward and surround her, raise our hands, and pray for her. Yes, as we pray, I also invite the church to pray in our hearts. Shall we raise your ha our hands and pray for her? Lord, I thank you for the life of our friend Ato Holi, who has been a huge blessing to many of us, and especially to your church and CF Pune. Today, as she prepared to, to go for her father's study, as she prepared to go out and to serve, Lord, I pray to you, may you continue to be her helper and strength. May you continue to let your Holy Spirit always be her guide as she will soon venture out into a demanding seasons. Father, we also thank you for leading her to this University of Hamburg in Germany. Lord, may you provide all the things that she needs and she required. Lord, I ask of you to grant my friend Otto with strength and stamina to handle the work pressure of her doctoral program. Help her to steward her newfound knowledge, wisdom, and abilities in a way that brings glory to your name alone and also for the betterment of our society and for others and for the people around her. Today, Father S.C. will be traveling to Mumbai to unite with her father who is going through treatment. O oh Lord God, may your mercy journey be with her. And also, Lord God, I pray that as she go there and be with her father, as her may her presence and her service be a healing to her father and may you watch over her father as well until and unless she leave for her study to Germany and until and unless she complete her doctoral studies, may you always watch over her. May you strengthen her that she will be a light to the world, a blessing to all of us and also bring glory to the church uh, of NCF Pune. We bless her and send her with so much of blessing and gratitude. Oh Lord God, we surrender our uh, at all lives and her father's studies into your loving hand. In Jesus' name, with thanksgiving, we pray. Amen. Now I invite the ushers to come forward. We will continue to worship the Lord by offering our tithes and offerings. Um, and also I invite Inato to come forward and say the offertory prayer. And after which, Kolu and Sarah will uh, lead the hymn. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have blessed us again once again lord <clears throat> and for enabling us to come together in this manner and have a beautiful time of worship lord lord at this time we want to pray for the offerings tithes and the gifts lord we pray that lord may these offerings be used for the good cause and for the expansion of your kingdom lord lord we pray that you will continue to bless <coughs> You'll continue to bless all those who have offered in your name, Lord. <clears throat> and also, Lord, we pray for all those who could not, so that they could be thankful to you, Lord. Lord, at this very moment, I, we pray to you that, Lord, you will listen to our 
you listen and answer to our every silent prayer, prayers, Lord. Lord, we submit our offerings and all our lives into your mighty hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in the morning, so in the Now I would like to present our friends from UBS who will be bringing us a song impressing God, glories, and His faithfulness. Please join me in welcoming uh, <coughs> the girl for NCF Pune Participant Foundation. celebrate Foundation Day 
to provide a recurring moment of memory and imagination. We also celebrate Foundation Day to look back, retrospect, and cre to critic and also to acknowledge what have gone through, we have gone through. Today, we are so fortunate, we are so blessed to have one of the best faculty from UBS. And this celebration, this Foundation Day, we are excited to be blessed and also to be revived and also to, uh, to exhort us uh, from the Word of God. We have uh, our sir here from UBS. He is a, a dean of doctoral studies. He is a very faithful man of God with integrity, discipline, and wisdom. We all look up to him. In fact, everyone, those who knows him, uh, particularly the students, UBS students, we all look up to him very much. He is my inspiration, particularly in, uh, personally, and I know that it, he is an inspiration to many more people. I believe and I pray that as he comes and speaks here, as he is gifted in uh, preaching and motivating people, I believe that NCF will be blessed through his sermon. He is also blessed with one uh, tall son, his name is Jess Wind. He is not here with us today because of his other engagement in his uh, activity. And he is uh, he's in junior college now. And also, uh, they are also blessed with another daughter named Frini. She is in Bangalore doing her uh, doctor of pharmacy. Today, our speaker is with his wife, uh, a very very wise, very calm, very beautiful woman of God, uh, Mrs. Clara. And yeah, church kindly join with me in welcoming our guest speaker today, Reverend Dr. Siju Matthew. Yeah, and lastly, I forgot to mention this. He is also the former principal of New Theological uh, NTC Deradon. Yes, sir, please come and take your time. You may please come up here. At the meantime, we also like to hand over a token of love from NCF, kindly received. I request Pastor to come and give. Warm greetings to you all, my dear brothers and sisters. In the sweet and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it is indeed my joy and privilege uh, to be with you all to minister uh, from the Word of God. This is the uh, second time I am preaching uh, in a Nagaland uh, brothers and sisters congregation in 2017 while I was serving as principal in NDC Dehradun. Uh, I was privileged uh, to attend the Senate Convocation in Trinity Theological College and since that was a centennial celebration uh, they allowed me to minister in one Baptist church near to Trinity. And uh, that was my first privilege to minister among the congregation. And uh, this is the second time when we all are celebrating the 37th uh, Foundation Day. I would say God's faithfulness thus far in NCF. And I do believe that God will surely bless and reward this church. Um, thank you very much, pastoral team, for giving me and our family this privilege to come over here to minister from the Word of God. Uh, as family, we are so happy to have good brothers and sisters in our care group, uh, Sen and Lo, and there was one uh, Allo Ato, who is doing his MTH Old Testament in UTC Bangalore, and then Lungri and Chuba, they all are in our care group, beautiful worship singers and uh, blessed worship leader. And so we are privileged to have, and of course, Dr. Lanu. Um, so praise be to God. Today, uh, I thought I will start with an illustration but purposefully, I avoid illustration 
which has anything to do with football because I know uh, our brothers are so fond of football that even they not only know the name of the players but they can even know the jersey number also. Uh, but as a motivational speaker I heard from brother Sonu he was sharing about an illustration about uh, three great players, I would say two great players in Indian cr cricket and hockey as well as a great painter. Uh, the cricket player you all may know, Sachin Tendulkar, and uh, the spinner was Brad Hogg from Australia. It was in the year 2007. Brad Hogg came new in international game and he bowled out Sachin Tendulkar. And when you take a prize wicket, that brings a joy. So after the match, uh, Brad Hawk came with the winning ball and asked Sachin Tendulkar, can you write an autograph on this? And he wrote one sentence, this day will never come again in your life. This day will never come again in your life. Now, some of you may feel that this is not a motivational, this is demotivating him. But for Sachin, it became a matter of privilege and honor that if next time, if Brad Hawk will take the wicket, then it is gone case. After that, it says that 35 encounters took place between Brad Hawk and Sachin Tendulkar in all three formats. One day test match, T20 and even IPL. It is said that not even once he took the wicket of Sachin Tendulkar. The reason is the moment Sachin Tendulkar wrote that this day will never come again in your life, he made very clear that he has to work towards going through the ball minutely so that he may not be bowled again by Brad Hawk. Second is a hockey player who is known as magician Dhyan Chand. In Hindi, we used to say Jadukar Dhyan Chand. It is said like this, he used to practice on a railway track. You know, it is not easy even to walk on a railway track. But with his hockey stick and along with the ball, he used to practice on a railway track. And one day, during an Olympic match, he was unable to score goal in first half. People asked, what is the reason? What happened to you? He said that there is some mistake in the measurement of the ground. How it is possible? It cannot be, it is an Olympic match. But since it was Dhyan Chand, they measured and they found that it was two inch short. So that shows the accuracy which Dhyan Chand had. And the third illustration is about a famous Spanish painter by name Pablo Picasso. One day a woman came to Pablo Picasso and said, can you draw a paint for me? And he drew a paint and said, you can now go and sell it and you will get huge amount. If you convert it in Indian rupees, it is somewhat 50,000. She went, thought that it is not possible. She went to an exhibition counter and sold it. Oh, it is Pablo Picasso. And they gave her the exact amount. She ran after this Pablo Picasso and said, in order to draw this paint, it took only 30 seconds. Can you teach me how to paint it? Pablo Picasso said, My dear sister, it took 30 long years for me to become master in this painting. But since I worked hard throughout these 30 years, it took hardly 30 seconds for me to paint this. The lesson which I want to communicate over here in this foundation day is, there is no substitute for hard work. 
there is no substitute for commitment we have to work hard towards the task which god has given to us to be honest i was not keeping well for last 3 days thursday while i was taking my mth class few students were having called it seemed they loved me so dearly that i got that virus yesterday night the temperature went to 102 degree around 8 o'clock and i don't know what to do good to have homemade doctor at home she prepared all what she can do in order to stand here in this pulpit and around 8 10 i became unconscious and i started sweating the temperature was 102 we thought the thermometer is wrong but morning when i measured it became 97 i am perfectly okay i am weak in my body but i know that the god whom i am worshiping is a powerful god and that god will enable me to go further and communicate the word of god this morning my message is based on second kings chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 let me repeat second kings chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 when they had crossed elijah said to elisha tell me what can i do for you before i am taken from you let me inherit a double portion of your spirit elisha replied verse 10 You have asked a difficult thing Elisha said yet if you see me when I'm taken from you it will be yours otherwise it will not Let me ask you a simple question Do you want to be a victor or a loser Do you want to be a victor or a loser This morning in my allotted time i wish to share five important areas in our life in order to be a winner and not to be a loser and i know that many among here are youngsters and this is something which is so essential in our life and i will take you through the character elisha the first quality which we should learn is work whole heartedly work whole heartedly first kings chapter 19 verses 19 to 21 elijah did a tremendous job when balisam was at peak when ahab married jezebel and brought Baal worshiping worship in the covenant land the land flowing with milk and honey yahweh was replaced by balisam in in word and in spirit in such occasion here comes a man elisha the tishbite who said as surely as the lord lives whom i serve there will be neither dew nor rain till i say and we all know what happened the battle took place between on one side ahab jezebel 400 and 450 baal and ashera and on the other hand elijah a man alone standing for the true worship and for the real worship and we all know what happened always i say with god we are majority and without god we are minority one man with the help of god defeated the strong balisam and yahwisam came back in the covenant community among the covenant land this can happen in our life this can happen in our personal life in our church 
in our setup and all. But the next moment, when Jezebel threatened that I will take away your life, the same Elijah ran for kilometers, hiding in the wilderness and asking God, this is enough, take my life. God test him. God took care of him. But still he decided, not so God, this is enough. I'm paraphrasing it. And during such occasion, God said, I have chosen a success for you, and that is Elisha. God communicated to Elijah but it was not passed on to Elisha at that moment. For Elisha, it was not aware that a mantle will fall upon him. But when you read the text, 1 Kings chapter 19, it says like this, So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the twelve pair. Elijah went to him and threw his cloak around him. Elijah then left his oxen and ran after Elisha. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come to you. Go back, Elijah replied, what I have done to you. So Elisha left him and went back. He took his twelve yoke, his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the blowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah. The first thing, work wholeheartedly. There is a difference between hard working and hardly working. God looks for hard working people. Three things we can see in this particular verses based on work wholeheartedly. First, expected job, unexpected blessings. He was with the 12 yoke of oxen. It means he was fully engaged with the work for which he was assigned. When you do your work, you will receive the blessings which you have never thought or imagined in your life. Let me encourage the Bible college students, my secular friends, of course, when I use secular, it doesn't mean that you are not spiritual. That is not my point. We all are serving for the kingdom of God. If God has assigned you to do a small job, how insignificant it is. But let me say, if you do it faithfully, wholeheartedly, unexpected blessings will come in your life. And through that, you will be a blessing for many. Sometimes, pastoral team here will ask you to do a job which is so less for you. You may feel that, oh, this, this is not fitting for me, but do it wholeheartedly. Unexpected job, unexpected blessings. In verse 20, detachment and attachment. Second thing, detach with your past occupation and attach with the occupation which God has entrusted to you. Sometimes what happens? Though we are in faith, though we know the word of God, but many times we bring our past in our present and that stops our future blessings. Let me repeat, many times when we are in the present, we take the past which we are supposed to leave it and take it in the present. As a result, we are curtailing the blessings which God has entrusted to us. Say bye to our past and embrace the present which God has given to you. The third is leaving and following verse 21 when i say leaving and following what he did with the 
York. What he did with the bull, he offered the sacrifice, gave everything and started a new journey. Let us be not like Peter. When he received the call, he left the net and followed Jesus. But when we come to John's gospel, chapter 21, again he took back the net. In Luke chapter 5, the whole night he was struggling to catch a fish. But then when he gave the net to Jesus, when he gave the ship to Jesus, when Jesus entered the ship, shared the word of God, and then ordered Peter to put the net, as a result, what happened? He received a miraculous fish, a miracle he experienced. But what happened at the end of his ministry? When Jesus was crucified, then he decided, let me go for fishing and many others joined the whole night they struggled but was unable god of second chance came in the life of peter and he caught 153 fish and after that jesus is saying to peter do you truly love me more than this three times jesus is uttering the statement my dear brothers and sisters Work wholeheartedly. Expected job, unexpected blessings. Detachment, attachment. Leaving and following. Second thing, which is the most difficult thing, including me, waiting. The second W is wait patiently. Sometimes you have to wait for months. Sometimes you have to wait for years. Nobody wants waiting period. Nobody wants to go to railway station and be in the waiting room. I still remember I was going from Bangalore to Dehradun, the place. From Bangalore to Dehradun, to Delhi, the train was before time. There was a gap of four hours. I said, oh, four hours in Delhi, Delhi waiting room. No, it is not possible, oh Lord. Let Bangalore, Delhi train may become late and it reach on time to Delhi station so that I can easily catch Dehradun train. God was so gracious to me that the train became so late that when it came to Delhi station, hardly I was having 15 minutes. It reached way, platform number one and Dehradun train was in platform number 14. 10 minutes more I know the race which I ran that day. Taking with all luggages, I entered the Dehradun Express. The moment I entered, the train left. I said, God, never ever I will make this type of prayer in my life. Allow God to work. In the case of Elisha, after receiving the mantle of call, he was not rushing in order to be in the shoe of Elijah because he knows one thing. I have to wait for my God's appointed time in order to exhibit the power of God in my community, in my life. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 21, what you see the end, it says, Then he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. Do you want to be a leader or do you want to be a servant? Do you want to be a leader or do you want to be a servant? Yes, 
Elijah became a leader. But before he received the name plate of leader, there was one more name plate and that was servant. And when these two name plate will connect together and that makes servant leader. That makes servant leader. But many a times we want to grab that leader post. But we are not willing to become a servant. That's why Apostle Paul in almost all his letters he says I am a doulos of Jesus Christ. A man who studied under Gamaliel. A man who is having all the potentials. But he considered himself as a doulos of a carpenter, Jesus Christ. That's why I always say a leader is the one who finds the way, goes the way and then only shows the way. Yes, we have to find the way. But first you... Go the way and then only show the way. I know that there are many potential young men and women. And God wants you to be the leader. But before climbing the ladder, it is so essential to become a servant. I will not take much time. I don't know. I, I forgot to see the time. But I know that. Uh, Lungri gave me 25 minutes. So from where? From now I have to count 25 or the time when I start preaching. In 2 Kings chapter 3 verse 11, kindly mark note of that. It says, who is this Elisha? They were saying, he is the one who poured water on the hands of Elijah. Who is this Elisha? He is the one who pour water on the hand of Elijah. It means, I don't know how many months, or whether it is days, or whether it is hours, but his task was to serve his master. If you serve an earthly master faithfully, you are eligible, you are qualified to serve the heavenly master. Serving earthly master faithfully is a prerequisite to show that you are qualified to serve the heavenly master. The third W, walk closely. Second Kings chapter 2 verses 1 to 8. I have no time to take you through the scriptures. When the time came for Elijah to leave this world to the place which God has allotted to him, not once, three times, Elijah said, stay here in Gilgal, stay here in Bethel, stay here in Jericho. Three times Elijah said, stay here, stay here, stay here. Gilgal is the place where Israel celebrated their first Passover in the promised land. Gilgal is the place where the male born was circumcised during the wilderness wanderings. Gilgal is the place where covenant was renewed. Bethel is the place of dreams where Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Jericho is the place where Joshua and others with their fervent faith, the wall of Jericho was broken. All these places are very important places. Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho. We all wish to settle those places. But think for a moment, if Elisha would have said, okay, let me obey my master. Let me stay in Gilgal. Let me stay in Bethel. Let me stay in Jericho. He would have obeyed his master in one sense, but he would have missed out to receive the double portions. Sometimes the temptation to the play should not stop for the grand and great blessings which are stored for you. 
the momentary benefits should not stop you to receive the eternal glory the great reward which god has entrusted to you the company of the prophets said to elisha do you know that you are master will be taken away today not once three times i always say in my care group also oppositions will come obstacles will come but that will give you opportunity 3o i used to say obstacles will come in your life oppositions will come in your life but obstacles and oppositions will create opportunity for you in order to receive blessings in your life work wholeheartedly wait patiently walk closely and the fourth is watch carefully the red passage which we have read now when they had crossed elijah said to elisha tell me what can i do for you before i'm taken away from you when this question was asked not when he received the mantle of call not in gilgal not in bethel not in jericho but when they cross jordan a question is asked by elisha tell me what can i do for you before i'm taken from you he is saying let me inherit a double portion of your spirit is it a selfish answer i don't think so elisha is saying guru you are having such a charisma and the days to come will bring more oppositions and in order to overcome all those things i want double blessings 36 years and this is the 37th foundation day and i'm not sure is there any one member who was here on the very first year of ncf i don't think so because the moment you said 1985 i was in class 9th and i know for sure no one will will be here they all left now is the new generation the challenges they face and the challenges which you will be facing will be all together in order to face the present challenges oppositions and obstacles you need a double blessings when they had cross elijah asked elisha responded then elijah said you have asked a difficult thing yet if you see me when i'm taken from you it will be yours otherwise it will be not it means what it means what you have to be careful at any moment i will be away if you watch it you will get if you miss it you will lose it i was going through verse 11 as they were walking along now sometimes when you walk you know your mind will divert no as they were walking along and talking together walking in my version it is returned as they were walking talking suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated i like that word no walking talking appeared separated such a great words though they were walking though they were talking i strongly believe the eyes of elisha was towards elijah elijah means l e y a h my god is yahweh and elisha means my god is salvation what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name we worship as my god is yahweh 
who was who is and who will be my god is the one who brings salvation let us gaze upon him that's why the psalmist says in psalm 27 one thing i ask of the lord this is what i seek that i may dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the lord and to seek him in his holy temple my dear brothers and sisters as we have entered in a new year let us remember our past how god wonderfully took care of ncf and let us look forward how to take ncf to a newer heart so few things which i have shared to you work wholeheartedly wait patiently walk closely watch carefully and then what will happen win surely early he received the mantle of call now what he received he received the mantle he has to take remember that time it was elijah giving now elisha is taking if you read the text elisha is taking he is standing near the jordan river and using the name god of elijah and when he hit the overflowing jordan river it got separated into two the company of the prophets they said the spirit of god which was rested on elijah has come upon elisha in order to receive the double blessings we should have that don't end up over there when you read second kings chapter 13 elisha was on the verge of death he was going through illness the king of israel came and said chariots and horses good to read the text elisha put his hand upon the hand of the king in first king 19 elisha was plowing with a 12th pair of yokes and he was engaged and when he's in his sick bed death bed his hand is upon the hand of elijah and even after death it says that when a dead body tests the bone of elisha that man became alive that shows that not only beginning matters ending also matters not only beginning matters ending matters and this is the word of god for all of you do you want to be a winner or a quitter do you want to be a, do you want to be a winner or a loser if you want to be a winner work wholeheartedly wait patiently walk closely watch carefully win surely and sign off with a great sign may god bless you all through this word thank you once again ncf for giving you this face to minister from the word of god may god richly bless you all gracious heavenly father we are approaching to the throne of grace for your gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love as the psalmist says bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits lord we recount the blessings which thou hast showered in the life of ncf here in pune for all these 37 years lord thank you for using many men and women O lord in this city O oh lord how it started as a student fellowship and how it turned into a national fellowship O oh master this is a prayer let the light which spark in the year 1985 may go in a wider way and let all the people who are in darkness may see the great light and rejoice over you once again i come with the pastoral department of this ncf and all men and women oh lord you be with us and bless us help us O oh lord to taste you and seek your face every moment of our life thank you lord for blessing us 
in Christ's name we do pray Amen. now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God the Father and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore Amen. yes we are really blessed through the word that has come to us afresh thank you sir for being present here and ministering the word to us and uh, may God continue to bless your family and sir your ministry as well even in the days to come um, I would also like to thank all the participants in today's service uh, and especially to our friends who bring the choir from uh, friends from UBS who had set a tight the time despite their busy schedules practicing in the middle of the night to bring uh, the song in praising God thank you so much face each other face each other and raise our hands as we sing this blessing song the Lord 